What's up guys, my name is Chris. Welcome to A Resource Life. Today I am reporting from my house and I wanna give you guys five things I learned from hanging out with Poshmark yesterday at an all male or a male market meeting where they've gone to discuss uh, best practices and maybe site improvements. Um, so I've been to a few Poshmark events now, a few Poshmark Lives. I've uh, been to Posh Fest one time. This is the first event that I went to that was um, more geared towards men. Um, there was a happy hour for men at Posh Fest, which was great. Um, but this one was interesting because right off the bat, um, there's not a single selfie picture. Um, so right away, um, the, the vibe was a little bit different. Um, more chat about best practices. Um, everyone had a drink. There were some um, hors d'oeuvres, which is fantastic to get people talking and to meet each other. Um, but I want to give you guys the five things that I suggested that I think should be um, improved on the site. And some of these you guys already know. Some maybe you may disagree with, but that's okay. That's just my opinion. Um, personally, before we start, I think that uh, Poshmark kind of has an identity problem um, because it's both a social media platform and an e-commerce platform. Um, so there are things that Poshmark does that may hurt sales but improve the social aspect. Um, and there are things that may improve the sales aspect that will hurt the social aspect. So it's fairly interesting, but let's get into it. Um, number one, I want a share all button. Obviously, this is not something that's going to happen right away. Um, but it's not democratic the way that it currently is. Um, there are two Poshmark sellers that reached out to me when I first started the platform, and they share each item between 10 and 20 times a day using a bot. Um, so when I heard that, it triggered in my brain that it's like bringing a knife to a gunfight if you're manually sharing. Um, also, if you have a large closet, um, I lost interest in Poshmark for the most part, re really because of the sharing. Um, I can't share my items 10 to 20 times a day because of a throttling limit. You can't share thousands, like tens of thousands of times a day because it thinks that you are a bot. So even if I were to hire someone to manually do it all day, it doesn't work because there's a, there's a throttle. I think there should be a throttle limit per item. If you have um, Gucci or you have Old Navy, they should both only be allowed to share three times a day, maybe morning, middle, and if you want to do the best match ranking, which they have right now, that's okay, but just cap the number of times you can actually share an item so that people don't have an unfair advantage sharing their 500 item closet 20 times a day before they hit the limit. Um, right now, I think this is disempowering um, to the people on the platform, especially women who are essentially you're wasting millions of women's time by doing this. Um, no other platform forces you to waste time by sharing. Um, they can use this time to improve their listings or list more items. And I think if there were more sales, people would spend the same amount of time on the app. Um, but, but the reality is people are logging into Poshmark, sharing, then leaving and focusing on other platforms. Um, number two, um, I want the ability to run a flash sale. Uh, I want to be able to lower the price and then bring it back up again. I don't want to always offer lower prices. Um, I heard a comment from someone that said that it's a win-win for Poshmark when the prices drop um, because the buyer gets a good deal. Um, and I don't know how it's a win-win unless you, you count Poshmark as winning because they get a, a, a final value fee or a commission on the end for the seller. I don't want to only get sales when I offer a sale. Um, that's not how that's not how regular retail works. They do a sale once every X amount of time to get people to go in the store, and the rest of the time they're able to get that the higher amount, right? You can't just only make sales when you run a flash sale. Although I haven't had that experience myself, you don't need to run a lot of sales. It's just that you're conditioning your buyer to only wait for sales if that's the only way to run a sale. If you have a larger closet, um, you could do what I did, which was create a macro that you open up 10 listings and you can teach it instructions. It'll go to each listing and automatically lower it 10%. Then I leave those windows open. Then later at the end of the day, I will set up the macro, do the reverse, and it will go through and increase the price by 10% at the end of the day. Um, and that you can do stuff like that, but that's really time consuming. I'd rather just run a sale like on eBay. Um, the third thing that I recommended is badges that actually mean something. On eBay, there is a top rated seller, which doesn't mean anything to me as a buyer. It's a cute little badge, but it doesn't, doesn't mean anything. On Poshmark, they have an average shipping time on the profile, but not on the listing. 
So if you could offer right there when people are about to check out or they're looking at the, the listing, if there was a badge that said this person ships in an average of one to two days or they have really good um, feedback or they've been a seller on Poshmark for a long time, something to encourage people to actually buy quickly, I think that would be a huge thing. Also, this is extremely unpopular, but it's my YouTube channel. I think you should be able to offer returns. That way, a larger seller can actually stand out over somebody who's just selling one item in their closet. Uh, I get it. Some people don't want to deal with returns. That's fine. But I want that because I want more buyers on the platform. Poshmark is losing tons of high-end buyers that are used to a return policy. They're not going to buy on a website that there's no return. It's, it's the same feeling you get at a garage sale, not a high-end retailer. Um, when you buy something that's nice from a nice store, they always have a money back guarantee um, just so that to, to elevate the buying experience. So I think they should have badges that actually mean something. Number four, I really think that there should be a Poshmark credit or debit card. Um, this is something I'm pretty passionate about. I know companies make tons of money on their credit card. Apple has released one. Uber has released one. And so if you can have a Poshmark debit or credit card that you can swipe and it comes out of your available balance, it's going to addict people to buying things. If you offer a credit limit, I'm pretty sure people would max it out immediately buying stuff on the platform. And I think that would be a huge revenue stream for Poshmark without charging additional fees. This is something that eBay does. They, um, they take the final value fee, which is what Poshmark does, 20% final value fee, but eBay charges you a uh, different final value fee for different categories, store fee, insertion fee, promoted listings fee, there's PayPal fees. Um, also now on PayPal, um, when they, when if, a, if a buyer initiates a return uh, or a cancellation, you lose the processing fee. You don't get that back. It's not refunded to you unless you use eBay managed payments. So it's like this huge cluster where they charge you nine different ways to, to do something. Poshmark is only charging you one way, which is really Im impressive. And they're looking for new ways to monetize. They opened up Canada. They're looking for different global markets, maybe different industries like home. Very cool. But I think that the Poshmark credit debit card would kill it, especially since PayPal is going away. And um, people selling on eBay were used to that quick access to cash, and now they don't have that. Um, number five, this is the last one, thank you guys for watching, is the fake MSRP. I don't like this experience. You can go through closets where every every single item is $777 is the MSRP. I think that that's garbage. It doesn't, um, as a buyer, <clears throat> it coaches you um, when you're selling things. People like to buy things that are like half off. If you have a ridiculous MSRP, people think your store is, is silly because you know, this sweater was not $800 in the store. It was 40. And you're saying that this $800 item is now 11. That's just not a good experience for people. I think that the fake MSRP should have a trigger. Um, and that's going to help people um, not um, basically feel better about their purchase. Um, and, and I get it that maybe if somebody wants to sell their $8,000 Louis Vuitton for 50 bucks, but that make, to me, it makes it look fake. I don't think that's a good experience. Um, okay, so finally, I do have a bonus tip. Thank you guys for watching. Please smash the like button. Um, and that final tip is the best offer threshold is not high enough. Um, so people can lowball you and it's very time intensive. In fact, when I first started Poshmark, I put on the listing no offers because it was a waste. It was wasting my time. There were so many lowball offers. I don't have time for that. I just want, and I wanted to represent myself like a store, not somebody's closet. You know, if somebody's closet, they're probably wanting to get rid of the item, I'm going to lowball that person. If it looks like a store, I'm not going to lowball. Stores don't even respond to offers. So I wanted to represent myself like that. But the best offer threshold, you can have an auto decline, auto accept, auto counter offer. There's a lot of opportunities to make best offer better. And I shared with them that I have a friend that um, professionally lowballed people on Poshmark, especially in the men's category. So what he would do is pick a brand, do the same thing as me, open up a bunch of windows, create a program that automatically lowballed everybody. And here's the thing. 
people accept. People are very desperate. The platform has a lot of sellers who are just trying to get stuff out of their closet. And um, if you have a hundred dollar item and you just want to get rid of it, of course you're going to accept twenty bucks for it. So that's something I find um, really interesting. If they want to improve the buying experience, the um, offering thing for larger sellers, we want more control. Um, maybe leave the low threshold um, optional, right? So for me, I would put no offers less than 85% of what I'm asking for because I already priced competitively. If you really want to get rid of the item, then maybe people can offer you five bucks on a hundred dollar item and you'll just take it because you want to get rid of it. But that needs to have a little bit more help. Um, I'm okay with the automated sales report. I think that that's fine. Adding in um, cost of goods sold and the custom SKU are great features. So I'm loving the direction that Poshmark is going. I love that they hang out with their community so often. Um, the way they handle their men's market, though, very different. That's not the same experience as Posh Party Live. Um, there wasn't one picture taken, and there wasn't any help getting the different groups to talk to each other. Um, it was just kind of like, do your best at networking. And I think that especially for online sellers, a lot of them are introverted. Um, the the way Posh Party Live is set up, it's much more inviting. It's very different. So as just a person who's experienced both sides of it, hope you guys appreciate um, my feedback. If not, dislike the video. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Take care, guys.